Good. So, Charity, welcome. Thank this you. is your first time. Yes, it this is. This is a kind of a new position for you. You worked at yes. another location, and, yes, and now you're with SMDH. And you want to tell us a little bit about, your, maybe a little bit about your background and how long you've been at this current position. I've only been in this current position for a little over a month, mm -hmm. but I've worked in geriatric care for a little over a decade. Okay. So definitely kind of where I specialize. <laughs> okay, very good. So how did, they, how did you see these two positions working together just, from your history? My focus at the hospital is going to be our swing bed program, mm -hmm. home health, and a lot of time that comes from orthopedic surgeries, um, a little bit of our senior demographic, um, and having all that experience with those things, being able to balance those and figure out what service would best you know, be for each individual. Having that history has definitely helped. So when, when you took, uh, I said, came into this position, did you sit down and then just start saying, okay, I, I, I see this and this and this and this, and I'd like to incorporate some of these things. I mean, you can't just come in and just take over. Oh, gosh, you, have, no. you, have, you know, there are protocols to the hospital. I have to do things. <laughs> but, I mean, you have your own ideas yes. that you, I'm sure, would like to implement or see the hospital maybe implement to expand their services in this department. Yes. I think what was wonderful coming in was, how well things were being done mm -hmm. so when you're looking at we could change this or do that different there wasn't like this overwhelming amount of like oh this or that so that was wonderful um i think the biggest point into this position is really building those relationships with clinics outside hospitals and most importantly with the people in our community so they can have the knowledge of the services that we do offer um, so basically, you were enhancing what you already were finding. You're yes. Just, you're finding a better way to utilize what they had. Yes, just kind of spending my time focusing on getting that information out there. Okay. So you're, you're kind of like business specialist with the hospital, yes. right? So in doing that and try, trying to incorporate that, you have to really create new partners, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes. It, it's nice that... And you there have contacts this, here already. Yes, I did already have contacts, <laughs> so that was really helpful. And then the hospital had a lot of their own contacts already. So sure. it was just kind of getting all those people and putting it together. Um, and just even having just one person to reach out to opens a lot of doors um, for that communication, especially with hospitals like in the city. A lot of our patients transfer up there. Mm -hmm. And opening that communication with them so they know, like, hey, that person doesn't have to stay two and a half, three hours from home. They can come back here and we can offer all these services to them, be close to their home and their friends and their families. That's really key because, you know, I don't think people realize that. They, they come from a rural hospital. Yeah. You know, I know my dad, uh, and I keep referring back to him, is just really by the most experience that I've had in doing this. He uh, had some open heart surgery, had to go into a couple of, of locations in St. Louis over time. And they just told you, well, here's your options. They didn't tell you you could take him somewhere else. Yes. They just kind of told you, well, here's your options, or here's who, who we recommend you yes. go to. And... You know, and I'm down here, and my dad's up in St. Louis, and I don't know if he's really happy in some of those places. And then uh, about the third time, I'm thinking, you know what? I might just bring him down to St. Louis. He could come down here and get the same treatment and probably get a lot more attention yes. than he's getting up in a major city. Yes. Who, obviously, they have a lot more beds, and mm -hmm. they have a lot more uh but they have a lot more people, yes. and you just can't get that same kind of personal attention as you're going to in a smaller hospital. And, yes, and... To add to that, like an important part to me about healing for patients is having their loved ones near, and just having people that they're close to. I think it helps with their mental health so well, um, keeps them from feeling sad or depressed. And to have your family there encouraging you along your way to recovery sure. is incredibly beneficial to anyone. Sure. And one of the things that I see about it, and I don't, I don't know if people really think about it, when you drive two and a half hours, say, mm -hmm. to go to St. Louis or go to springfield and you have to go to the hospital and you're, you're concerned about your loved one and then after you see them if they're having a bad day you're thinking about that all the way back you're yes. not really thinking about driving all yes. the way back you're thinking about that loved one yeah. and they're having a bad day how can i make it better that's, that's a good way to cause an accident and find yourself getting hurt yourself oh yeah we don't want we don't want patients that way <laughs> no 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 we don't want those kind of we, we you know if it has to be but you yes. know we really want and, and what retrospect of what you're saying is, is that being local, 15, maybe 10 minutes away from home, you yes. get there, you talk to them, you're not in a rush to leave, you're not trying to no. be rush hour traffic. Mm -hmm. And I know I have friends here, I've had friends here for a long, long, long time that absolutely refuse 
to drive in St. Louis traffic. Oh, yes. <laughs> Plenty of those, too. Yeah. <laughs> and so when we get up there, they hand me the wheel. So here, you do it. <laughs> you go. You know, you're used to it. Well, you know, you just you have to get accustomed to that kind of driving. It's a different type of driving yes. than it is in the country on a two-lane road or, or four-lane road, as a matter of fact. One of the uh, interesting facets, though, of what, what you're doing, though, is that you're also expanding the presence of Salem to other businesses that may not be familiar with them correct that, yes definitely um I, i've already had some where it's like you know oh yeah like we've had people from your area and they just they didn't really know what to do or who to reach out to or what we offered and so that was I had a good experience at a hospital um in st louis where i walked in and they're like who are you and what are you here for? And in that moment, I met three people from Salem while I was waiting in the waiting area to speak to who I need to speak to. And they mm -hmm. thought that was amazing. Like, you know, wow, like you really can help us with your people. So it was a really good experience for me. Yeah, and, and people need to know that those options are available. Yes, they do. Yeah. Very important. Um, everything like from outpatient therapy to inpatient therapy, if we have um, some med surge stuff that we do in the back um mm -hmm. and cat scans mris you right, absolutely. you don't have to drive two and a half hours to get that done we can get that done here in salem and send that to you know your specialist that's maybe in a city far away um it always makes me sad to hear like i'm gonna have to drive you know two hours to get a cat scan or an mr and you don't have to actually no. you can just stop by get it done and We'll get it to your doctor like that. <laughs> and Charity, one of the things, I th and I and I know this is kind of part of your department, but you know, we have the central scheduling. People can actually get these tests done if they want to get them on mm -hmm. their own, and they are probably I won't say the most affordable in the state, but if not the most, really close to the most affordable in the state. Yes. <laughs> I saw some of the the cost that again associated with my father up in St. Louis for tests i was like there's no way you yeah. know uh I, I would pay that and then I'm, I'm sitting here we have a brand new mri yes we have the best in 3d technology for mammography yes we have a very very outstanding x-ray technicians and, and machinery yes brand new ultrasound yes Br <laughs> brand new i mean brand yes. new lab equipment brand new we're not talking five years old we're talking less than a year yes cat scan brand brand new there too mm -hmm. we there have you. all these in the latest and the neat things about like with our mri it's an open bore <laughs> it is you know and that if anybody's ever taken an old mri you feel like a sardine <laughs> Do you not? Just, I, I don't know. Oh, you, did you ever have an MRI? Done? And not 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 in a small machine, no. Uh, okay. well, I mean, <laughs> so, but I've heard stories. Well, okay. Very so, claustrophobic I mean, and tight. Well, and... Right, but if you have to put your head in, yeah. you have to do it. You know, it, it gets small, mm -hmm. and you feel because there's vibration. You, you can feel the mag magnets, okay? Yeah. So it makes it feel even smaller. And so when you get in there, you get a little claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. With this open bore machine. If you're a little bit larger, you're not going to be compromised. No. And that's, that's the neat thing about it. And the images are incredible. Fantastic. It's fascinating what those pieces of equipment can do. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, I had the opportunity to tour the departments in the hospital, and that was just really cool to me. <laughs> like, right. I know that's not really my lane, but seeing it, I was like, wow, this is <laughs> great equipment, and it does wonderful things, and um, they can find anything in it and you know state of the art is what it is so don't uh sure. don't overlook that <laughs> well and that's exactly but that's what i'm saying when you when you're selling the salem hospital and the services that they mm -hmm. have this is one of the great services that they offer you can't find i mean there's other hospitals even a lot larger in salem that don't even have this new equipment that's equipment right. is just not first off with COVID, it's not even easy that to, uh that easy to get <laughs> no it's not you know and if you've already have it and it's within a year two years and it's the latest you know why wouldn't you be using this especially at the price that you can pay to get that test done yeah i think they have like cash price options um mm -hmm. especially for 
people who maybe have large deductibles and their insurance right. plan and for the opportunity to see some of those and they're good numbers if you're comparing it to sure. oh, yeah. you know your deductible or, or full cost uh, good numbers absolutely you know and then and people say, well, how can they do that? Well, you do it because there's, the overhead is taken by the hospital. So if you go to, an, uh, let's just say, uh, if you're going to go get an image taken in St. Louis, and it's just an, at a basically an x-ray shop, and I'm just going to call it what it is. It's basically, you go in, you get an x-ray, and that's all they do. Yes. They do x-rays and MRIs. Well, their entire overhead mm-hmm. is covered by those x-rays and tanks. Yes. They may say it's a discounted price. Well, it might be a little bit cheaper than some of the major hospitals up there because they're always expanding and yeah. adding on. But it's still going to be pretty high. Yes. Compared <laughs> to the overhead we have in Salem and, and what they can do here and offer for a test. Mm-hmm. If you want the cash option, if you want to do that central scheduling, have them do that, you're going to be amazed yes. at how affordable a test can be. Now, grant you, it's not free. Okay, well, we all no. know that. But, <laughs> You know, but I, I go back to, uh, again, I go back to the 3D mammography machine mm-hmm. we have. It takes care of some of the type of scans that many of the machines can't, like especially the dense breasts. Yes. This machine can look at three, it, it, it's, it gives a whole picture, not just two images. And then they have to go, to, well, if they don't see something in there, they can't determine it. You got to go back and do it again. Yeah. Or maybe two or three times yes. <laughs> if they can determine. This Fair one enough. actually gives that good image of the entire uh, breast. And you yeah. can see what's in there. Yes. That's what 3D imaging is. And there's not a lot of hospitals in Missouri that even have a 3D mammography machine. Yes, we were very blessed to get that. It was wonderful. <laughs> it is. It's fantastic. It is. So, I mean, these are great selling points for the hospital when, when you're yes. trying to explain to people... You know, well, you guys can't provide the services we can. Now you stop right there, you know. (laughs) We can because this is what we have equipment-wise. I mean, my goal for it is I want to make sure that people here in Salem know what we're here to serve them with, you know, to make their lives easier. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a good friend, and something similar with your dad happened um, with her mother, and it was very difficult for her to be able to go and visit and go and see and um, two-hour trips to some place just to get those scans. Um, and sometimes they're – I think sometimes people get stuck. They feel like this is the entity that my specialist is at or this is where I go to, so this is where I have to have everything done. And that's not the case. You can come back here for your therapy. You can come back here for your inpatient, your scans, your labs. You can do all of that right here um, and not have to leave the comfort of our wonderful community. <laughs> so And make that drive. And make yes, making that drive is very difficult. You know, it's winter right now; it's even well, worse. Exactly. So, but you know, let's just say that you had, you need to get an MRI on your shoulder. Your shoulder really hurts bad, or whatever you need to do, and you think, I've got to go to St. Louis. So the whole two and a half hours or two hour drive up there. What are you thinking about? Thinking about your shoulder. What are they going to find? How bad is it going to be? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. No, okay. I mean, that's a pretty, that's why you're going up there. The closer you mm-hmm. get the more apprehensive you're getting. Am I not correct? Yeah, you are correct. Okay, so here you are at Salem, five-minute, eight-minute drive. You get there, and you're going to run into Bobby or whoever over there, and they're going to make you laugh. Oh, and great not, team, yeah. And you're not going to be as concerned because it's right here at home. Yes. They may still find something. And I'm not saying that. Right. But at Less least you're here at home yes. to where if they do find something, then on that way back, you're not thinking, oh, my God, what, how am I going to take care of this do this this you don't have to worry about those things no yes you know yes so there, there's a real mm-hmm. nice strategy and before you you make any commitments obviously mm-hmm. is to figure out what's the best for you but not only for you but your family yes it is and i think our goal is to work closer with the clinics we have here in town um and kind of build that working relationship between because if you let's say you go and you have a specialist at another entity here in salem we're still the hospital, you know, that you kind of end up going to. And so building those relationships and working better with them so those patients, you know, can stay right here for those services. It's a big part of this right. this and, goal, too. And, Charity, we often talk about, I don't think people realize how large the Salem Hospital District is. It is. It's, yeah, it's I learned. I didn't even know. Um, <laughs> and I took this job, and I'm like, okay, so where's our map? Um, and we serve as portions of a lot of other counties that surround us um and they need it i travel for work a lot and 
and go to smaller communities. And I've met people that are an hour and a half away mm -hmm. from healthcare, um, and that's why our hospital is so important. You know, you think about it. If you're, you know, having a heart attack or a stroke, or even if there's a car wreck, how far away from healthcare would you be without Salem Hospital? A long way. A long way. And I've met people in those uh, predicaments and um, situations, and it's really stressful and very, very nerve-wracking um, for those individuals. And so we are very blessed, being a small community, to have the hospital here to serve us. Right. And there's certain services. Salem does not do heart surgeries. They don't do that things. But what they can do is stabilize you to get you to those places yes. where they those services can be. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you've heard people, we'll just talk about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to. Sorry, well, we're guys. We're just going to tell you uh, the story. I, I, I had it come right. to me and they're like, you know, it's, they felt like it was a Band-Aid station. Mm -hmm. And so my thought on that is if that Band-Aid's available to save your life, until you get to your next stop where you can get that full life-saving procedure. I'm happy for that Band-Aid. Like, stick it on me. Mm -hmm. Do what you have to do to to keep me going until I get where, you know, um, you can do an open-heart surgery sure, or sure. whatever big service it may be. Uh, yeah, maybe, you know, we can't offer that, but what we do offer keeps you going until you get there, and that's wonderful to have. It's just amazing. Well, I know another part of what you're talking about is the STEMI and stroke protocol. Yes. Because we're one of the top ranked in the mm -hmm. state in those results. Yes. And when you start and people say, well, how can that be? You're a small little hospital. Well, uh, I've been in there uh, with the emergency directors that we've had and it's amazing. It's it's like a machine when it happens, when I bang and yes. they do the test. It's the, everybody knows where to go, what to do, how to get it done. Yes. And it is an amazing thing to watch. And I know Tabitha Stanfast, who's back there doing the ED. Yes. She says she's like being home again. But, I mean, she <laughs> was one that actually convinced the hospital board years and years ago to look into this and yeah. get it done. And she wrote a lot of that and got it all approved. And without, you know, her guidance and getting that started and then the – the continuance of that mm -hmm. with all the other EDs that we've had coming through. And then we've had a lot of good ones. You would not have that kind of service and knowledge when something like that should happen. If you have a yes. stroke, you don't want to be going to a hospital that doesn't know what to do. No, not at all. And starting that program, and if, there's a lot of work that goes into it Holy to make bad. sure they're doing everything that they need to do um, and, you know, taking the right steps to to save a life and um th we get feedback from hospitals and it's wonderful it's it's a great program and it has saved and helped numerous people so absolutely and now with air evac being on the campus of the hospital if somebody has to be flown out they they cut off i think it was like four minutes and four minutes doesn't sound like much, but, oh, but stroke, it is. our, our STEMI <laughs> yeah. protocol, four minutes is a huge what, amount what is of it time. when seconds count that's yeah, not they, a joke it's uh, very no, it, yeah it's, Every second counts. Every second does you count. Know, so you definitely want to make sure that, uh, you know, you you think you should be thankful that this kind of service is available this close. Yes. Right at home. Yes, absolutely. And um, I do want to touch, like, pretty big on our um, inpatient therapy, our swing bed, Good hospital bad. swing bed program. Gonna, I was leading that direction. Were you? You jumped <laughs> on it. Okay. No, sorry. But go ahead. Um, designed for patients who maybe um, – you've had an ortho surgery and you need some therapy mm -hmm. and maybe you're not ready to go home, but you don't really qualify for that acute stay anymore. It's wonderful for that. Um, patients who've been sick and they're just weak, same thing, can't stay, but you're not really ready to go home. A nursing home seems a little, a little bit That's too drastic. extreme yeah. for you. So it's great. You get to stay in the hospital the comfort of that that's fantastic mm -hmm. and receive you know your skilled nursing services they can teach you about any new diagnosis that you have medication management right. along with your physical and occupational therapy um, I know for some people it's you know but I really want to go home I want you at your best when you go home so you don't have to come back to me sooner sure. <laughs> so that is a huge goal um, is focusing on that and our outpatient therapy and our home health program that we have um, you know right here in Salem and they're wonderful. Our home health, um, Christy, she's the director of that. Oh, gosh, she's oh, amazing. Yeah, she's, yeah. One of the sweetest souls. Very, <laughs> she really is. I'm sorry. She, she is, she's <laughs> I don't want to She is and yeah. really has a lot of compassion for what she does um, for individuals. And I would say having her on board is a huge blessing. And anyone who gets to meet her is very blessed. Right. Really fantastic human being. So I would just say if you're 
somewhere and you're, you're feeling the pressure, mm -hmm. um, remember, patient choice is always first. It is your choice where you want to go and what you want to do and where you want those services to be at. Yeah, and, and let's uh, be honest about it. No hospital wants you to come back. When they, went, when they send oh, you no. home, they want you to be healthy and go home. Yes. And stay home and be healthy. Because if it comes back, that reflects on the reports that they get back from Medicare and everything oh, else. Oh, yeah, it does. Because readmissions are not, not good. good. <laughs> I mean, unless it's something different. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you hurt your shoulder and then you go home and fall down steps and break your knee, that's not the same thing. <laughs> Shoulder didn't make you fall. You know, but hopefully you don't do that. <laughs> yes, that no. uh, or slide out here on the snow or go out there and have a snowball fight yep. and get hit with an ice ball in the head. We don't want that either. No. <clears throat> but the idea is readmissions are, are not a good thing. They, they, that's really what they don't want to have happen. That's why the swing bed program is so important. You may feel like you're ready to go take on the world. And I can honestly say this, Jerry. I had COVID and I had to get back to the station, okay? I had the license <laughs> renewal was due, okay? And, <laughs> yeah. and they wanted me to stay another day, and I said, I can't, okay? And I begged Dr. Al, let me go. And he let me go, come home. Mm -hmm. All right, so I came back, did my thing. And he, because he asked me, he goes, Well, how do you feel? I said, I, I feel fine. You know, I, you, you're saying you feel fine. Well, I'm laying in a hospital bed, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel great. After one hour, <laughs> Here, yeah. working, I felt like I got hit by a train. Different story, yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm just like, oh, gosh, I'm tired. I can't think. I, you know, yeah. You know, I need a place to go sit down. Yeah, I wasn't ready, really ready to come back yes. at that time. Now, grant you, I was very close to home here, but those are the things that we're talking about. Yeah. You think you're ready. And a little bit more physical therapy maybe might be needed. Yes. Maybe, maybe they need to do a few other things to make sure that, okay, that you say, well, yeah, that knee feels great. I'm sound like I could run a mile, but you can't walk 20 feet. You can run a mile. <laughs> yeah, okay? not yet. You know, Just so, wait. But they want to make sure that you are in good enough shape to get home, to yes. get from room to room, to the mailbox, wherever it is mm -hmm. that you need to go safely. Safely. So you don't come back. I don't want you to come back and start over. And exactly. I've said that, like, just give me a few more days. I don't want you to come back and, you know, if, if something happens, you're, you're back at square one. And right. that's what we want to avoid for patients. Um, and I get it. I'm, like, one of the most stubborn people. Seriously, I'm just going to be honest. You will ever meet. Like, when, I've, when I'm done or I've made up my mind or I'm the same way. I, I had a surgery one time and the day after my doctor walked in and I was dressed with makeup on and he started laughing and he's like, get back in that bed. You are not going home. Like he knew what I wanted. I'm like, no, he couldn't tell. Huh? Yeah, I was like, I'm fine. He's like, you are not fine. Like stop. And so I understand that, but he did make the best choice for me because I was not fine. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, like I said, mine was out of necessity, but yes. I, I can honestly tell you, I, you know, he did not want me to go. Yeah. He said, he goes, you need at least one more day. I said, you're probably right, but I really don't have a choice. I it have is to hard. go, you know, so I can get this done. You have now, responsibilities. I said, yeah. but, I, but I also knew the factor of being readmitted. If I, they release me, I don't want to go back because being readmitted does not look good on the hospital. Yeah. Because it means they released you too soon. Yes, yes. And, and that's what we, yeah. you know, we do want to avoid that. And like I said, get you back the best you, yeah. um, as best as you can be. So, and then always, you know, you guys, anyone can call anytime. Sure. If you have questions about anything, services that we can offer, options that you're exploring, call. Someone can talk to you, help you through it, answer questions for you, regardless of what it may be. I would, you know, if we can't answer questions, the person who answers the phone can't, they're going to find someone who can. Mm -hmm. And I will say, like, I'm new there, um, but I've met, it's wonderful people. Very good, very kind people working there. And I see so much. It's the number one thing that I look for is the, I know I'm so silly, just people <laughs> who have compassion. I have so much oh. compassion, you know, for people and a passion for what I do. And being met with that by mm -hmm. so many people, that was an amazing feeling. Asking people, like, why did you choose to work here? And the number one answer is always for this community and the people in it. And it's so heartfelt, just wonderful, wonderful to hear that. It is. And it's, it, it is. And we are so glad to have you. You know, like I said, well, no, you, I mean, you're familiar. And that's the easier part, too, because you were familiar with a lot of the people around. Yes. So stepping into this position, yes, you had a lot to learn. I but did. But at the same time, 
there was still a comfort level of knowing a lot of people that was a good support staff yes for you yes so that if you needed some answers you knew who to turn to yes you know and you actually knew who these people were it's not like you're turning to a supervisor you have no idea who that is and you know that can be very intimidating when you start a new job when you turn to somebody that you think they're you're wasting their time yes I think I I will say I was not met with that. No, no, it you was, don't get that. It was they're really, you know, wonderful and open, and I would show up and be like, "Hey, <laughs> it's me," and yeah. everyone has been great to answer questions and not make me. I think I've apologized like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm bugging you so much," and everyone's like, yeah. "No, no," like well, I rather you, you ask the question and not know, make it wrong. Yeah, and I want to learn fast. Like I'm could sit around and be like okay well I but I'm not going to it's just not who I am I'm gonna seek the answer and try to find it um, and they've been great with me um, and kind of having that outward personality they've been wonderful <laughs> but in seeking that answer you learn more oh yes I've learned a yeah. great deal I would that was such a wonderful surprise for me was um, coming into it like working in healthcare and then coming in and learning things that I didn't even know the hospital mm -hmm. could do or offer or even right. certain guidelines that they had that you know I'd look back at a past situation and be like oh that makes sense now you know as to why this happened when we were working together um, that has been really great uh, wonderful knowledge you get to share that with people is wonderful too. Opened your eyes. It? it does. It yeah. really does open your eyes. Yeah. It does. Because you think you know, but you really don't. You know. you don't know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And like I said, everybody always said, "Well, I," you know, they always tell me what I do. I love it. And I said, "Well, you only do this. That's that's it. That's all I ever do. I sit behind the microphone. That's all I ever do." <laughs> you know. But you already know the difference today. I've been putting everything back yeah. on since the electric went off. Just ran out, started a backup <laughs> generator. Had to go check. And it, it's you just nobody knows. Nobody and, knows, and they don't see it. No, and that's okay. To, you know, and that, but it's it's that thing that I'm not going to go broadcast that out. You know, like this is this is everything we have to do. Just like you don't, you couldn't even sit down here. If I asked you to write me down 25 things that you do in oh, a day, you probably do 50. But you're going to try and figure out what's the best 25 I do. That's what, yeah. Right? Yeah, you would. Okay. And that's usually what people do. Top so answers. somebody <laughs> says, you know, what, what's the, what, if you had 25 things you do in a day, start naming them. I said, I can, I can name 25 things I do before 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, but that's, that's what I have to do. That's yeah. part of what I, I've been doing for a long time. Yes. So to me, it's just natural. But if I had to train somebody to do all that, just like I had to do this morning, if they're not here with me to see it, mm -hmm. they're not going to believe it. They're not going to know you have to do this, and you have to do this, and you have to do this, mm -hmm. and you have to do this. And there's certain little tweaks. It's like every yeah. little step that goes you know, into like, it. Yeah. Like this morning, we, we have a, 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 a radio monitor down here. Mm -hmm. okay? So the electric was off for about two, hour, two and a half hours, somewhere in there. And it wouldn't come back on. Yeah. Well, I, I have no radio monitor in the studio. Oh, this is crazy. Why would it not come back on? There should be nothing wrong with it. I mean, it comes up and everything. So I, I did the old-fashioned way. I hit it, you, and it came back on. You just gave it a good thump. I did. I just went, bam, and then, then ta -da. You fixed it. I problem fixed it. solved. Well, I don't think it's problem solved. I think, no. it's, I think it's aging, and it's getting to that point that it's probably getting a little bit dirty. But for this moment that I need you to work. Working for now. You better work, you know. <laughs> Show them the fist. You better start working or I'm going to start pounding. I don't and, think and, I can do that in my life. <laughs> I don't think stand. you should. <laughs> you know, they might frown on that. A little bit, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that the staff there, well, especially the upper people, would actually like you pounding on their MRIs. Or, no, uh, <laughs> probably hands. not. Probably not. But, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. No, you, you I do. You have to do what you have to do. Yes. And then as you're learning these things, when you go and these people are helping you, and they're they're adding that, uh, I'm going to say the extra information that you're getting, because of experience, what you're learning when you're researching something mm -hmm. is the actual book learning. So the experience and the book learning come together. Absolutely. And it makes you smarter. Got to have you Smarter about how. To, okay, I didn't know that about that person, or I didn't know that about we could do this with mm -hmm. these people. Now you do. Now you put it into motion. Now you actually make it happen. Yes. And now that's you make the fun it happen. part, right? I think it's fun. I enjoy it. I do. I, I love 
people um and i love helping people there's nothing more exciting to me than like knowing like i'm gonna get to help you and keep you close to your family and watching someone recover and my favorite is when they get to go home like go see your cats or your dogs or i don't know like it brings me a great amount of joy to know that you you know played some small role in that for someone and yeah. so that's that's my goal i will like move mountains to try and help someone it's just who i am i you know, I can't help it. <laughs> well, we appreciate what you do. And if Thank anybody you. needs to talk with you about those kind of services, you know, you talk about the swing bed services. Yeah. You talked about different things, making sure people get back home to get the services mm -hmm. they need. Can I give you a call? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you call the hospital. Just put in extension 6130. And three zero seven two nine six six two six. By the way, oh yes, or seven two nine five nine one seven. Either one. Either one does see. work. Yes, yeah, um, they do work. And we're uh, we got a new logo, so working up some new flyers and brochures and informational packets to be able to give to people so they can have that on hand and know um, who to reach out to. Our social worker Lisa Delaney, she's a great resource mm -hmm. for any of those programs um, as well, um, and to maybe even just understand the process of what you may need to do to get there um, and we're working on um kind of like pre-planning for people if you know you have an upcoming procedure or even if you're in a hospital and you need help or your family needs help you know what's our next step we sure. can kind of get that set up for you ahead of time and figure out which program's best for you. Much easier to do it ahead of time than after a surgery yes. <laughs> when they're saying, well, we're, you know, I, well, where are we going to, where's this patient going to go? Yes. So, you know, after surgery, you come out of surgery, you're put in, into a kind of a recovery room. <laughs> and after recovery room, you better have a place to go. Yes. Always uh, planning ahead That's in right. all of your endeavors is very important, especially well, and, when it comes to It's a necessary step. It, really it is. is. It's and easier than being caught in a moment and then being like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Uh -huh. um, and if you are in that moment, we will help you work through it. Um, make it as easy for you as possible. That's um, also important to me. You never know when, you know, maybe you fell and you weren't planning on this. Or you got sick and this wasn't a place you thought you were going to find yourself sure. in. We'll do the legwork for you. <laughs> I don't think anybody anticipates when something happens to them. Yes. That it's going to be that bad. Correct. Okay. Oh, well, I just fell. I'm fine. I'll get up and I'm, well, okay. You may have dislocated your hip. You mm -hmm. may have broken your arm. Yeah. You may have cracked a rib. You, and you may not even know it. Yes. You know, that's the sad part about it. It's true. Then you let it go and all of a sudden now you've got some major issues. Mm -hmm. you got some not superficial pain, but then you've got every time you turn to your left, you got to just a searing pain in your side or whatever yeah. instead of you know i fell i'm a little bit bruised but i think i'll be okay we'll go get an x-ray yeah we'll go get it checked out find out find out because the more you move the worse it's gonna you know get. that broken <laughs> rib yeah. i mean i don't know if any and i know a lot of people out there have had cracked ribs and oh, broken yeah. ribs but you can you can crack a rib mm -hmm. I, I got a hockey puck cracked two ribs <sighs> hit me and cracked two ribs i didn't even know it uh, I knew it took my breath away. Yeah, but it, it didn't feel good. Yeah, and it hurt, but it was cracked. Now, mm -hmm. what a lot they could do, they just said, okay, well, you got two cracked ribs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's little little cracks. And when I was 17 years old. They, they weren't too worried about it. Yeah, you're going to heal easy. Right, well, <laughs> no, I mean, they really weren't too worried about it because they said it'll heal fairly quick. Yes. But if you're 70 years mm -hmm. old and you get a couple of cracked ribs, it may take a little longer to heal, and you may not be able to do some of the things you're trying to do that you've been currently doing. Yes. You may have to cut back on some of that because that may put pressure on mm -hmm. those ribs. Yep. Yes, absolutely. And that can cause you a lot of pain. Oh, yes. I, I've been there. It's not an enjoyable no, it's <laughs> time not. at so, all. So. I mean, there, there's a lot of different situations, and that's why you should have a primary care physician to oh, talk to yes. them. And then they, and if you have concerns with them, and then they can actually confer with other doctors that we have at Salem Hospital and even other doctors at other hospitals and say, hey, look, I'm not sure what's going on with this person. They're getting this pain, but we can't find anything. What do you, have you seen this before? Yeah. You know, it's amazing what kind of fraternity there really is with between physicians. Yes, you need to have those wonderful working relationships for sure. It's very yeah. important for the patient, you know, for each other also. But yeah. number one priority, always the patient makes uh, it easier for them so charity give me that number again 79 extension 6130 6130 or 
Chair Nigat, thank you very much thank you for, for coming me, in. We really appreciate it. it. And congratulations on your new position, thank you. obviously. It looks like you're, you're taking it in stride. Doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's loving it, and that's great. I am. You know, when, when you got somebody that really, really has a passion about what they do, it really makes it's not a job. It, it's just what you enjoy doing. Yeah, I love going to work every day. There you go. You can't beat that. <laughs> no. All right. Thanks again Thank for coming Thank you, Stan. In. Here on KS1, it's our spotlight on the Salem Memorial District Hospital, brought to you by Inman Insurance. Stick around for Civic.